Hello, hello everyone. It's Doug Diamond here. Welcome to the Diamond Report Live. It's 10.06 p.m. on Sunday night, April 28th, 2024. And yes, I think I agree with what they were saying there with much of it. Maybe we need to start a new movement. What do you think? A new movement. We'll start that here tonight. I think we should call it Abort AI. We're going to become pro-abortionists. Not humans, but AI. Artificial intelligence. What do you think? If it's going to become a threat to humanity, then we have a moral obligation to murder it immediately. So says Tucker Carlson. I thought that was pretty interesting. And uh, I don't really disagree with that. What do you guys think? So that's on uh, Greg Reese's Substack. And of course you can find the video in multiple places across the internet. Band.video and other places. But I thought that was a, um, a really good one to start the show with tonight. So anyway, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into that a little bit more as we go here tonight. So hope you guys had a good week, and you were off and running here on another Diamond Report Live. Mostly news articles tonight, I think. Not too many videos, maybe a couple. But uh, you know, I see the uh, the chat. People are agreeing with what I'm saying here. Yes, abort AI. That's going to be the new. That's probably going to be the show's name. New abortion movement. We're pro-abortionists now officially. Just not aborting humans. Aborting AI. All right. Foreign countries have begun pulling their gold from the U.S. for safekeeping. This is on HalTurnerRadioShow.com. A number of countries around the world have begun withdrawing, withdrawing their gold bullion from storage in the U.S. over fears about the U.S. financial system. What's that tell you? It's not only our financial system. It was the forcible seizure of Russia's sovereign wealth funds. The world now sees the U.S. as nothing more than a den of thieves. Because that's who runs the U.S. A den of thieves. Over the past 10 days, at least four countries have decided to pull their gold reserves from the U.S. Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria, and a fourth country named below whose decision is tightly concealed to prevent panic. That nation is named below in covert intel for subscribers only. And even though I'm a subscriber, I am not signed in. This is where it would be. So if you're a uh, subscriber on Hal's website, HalTurnerRadioShow.com, you can log in and have a look and see who the fourth country is. I just saw this article moments ago, so I don't even know myself. But um, yeah, this is what uh, Hal Turner is reporting, and this is the different um, countries he mentions, and then a few paragraphs about each one. Cameroon, Ghana, and Nigeria are pulling their gold. And, and I would say that's good luck if you can get it, right? Because it's, it's truly a den of thieves. It's the criminals that are holding their gold. Do we really think that e any of those countries are going to have the power and authority to get their gold back? It seemed to me like that was tried not too long ago by some larger countries. And their gold just mysteriously disappeared. We don't know what happened. We don't know. It was there, but now it's not. So my guess is that's going to be happening all across the uh, all across the world, you know, as other countries come to the U.S. and say, we want our gold back. Good luck. Because it's definitely a, a case of the, uh, the wolves who are watching the chicken coop in this case. So these uh, protests are erupting uh, apparently all over the place with the um, pro-Palestinian protesters. So this is an article on needtoknow.news. Protests erupt at universities across America. Rubber bullets have been used against the protesters. Protests against the Israel-Gaza war have been spreading across the U.S. Some of the protests include students erecting encampments in solidarity with Palestinians. There were armed responses at the University of Southern California, USC, and Emory University. University. Law enforcement officers wore, wore riot gear and used tasers rubber bullets, and pepper balls as they made arrests and dispersed the crowds. That's because this country is full of nothing more than free speech. That's all we have is free speech around here. And if you try that thing called free speech, you're going to get rubber bulleted and pepper balled and pepper sprayed and tasered. Emory University officials claim there were no students or staff in the initial protest group, so they were considered trespassers. So that's a little... The little uh, wrinkle here that they're throwing into the story to say, see, we, it's okay if we do that because uh, they weren't actually 
um, members of our of our staff or student body they were trespassers my guess is that's probably not true um, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said that Israel has been falsely accused of genocide and starvation. Never mind the facts, never mind what we can see with our own eyes, never mind all the headlines and the stories of killing all these um, multiple tens of thousands, I think we're well over 30,000 was the last report I heard, uh, of innocent people being slaughtered at the hands of the Israelis. No, don't believe that. Only believe Netanyahu and what he says. He's calling for the protests to be stopped. I think it's beyond that. He's, he's calling for these people to be silenced as well. Says um, Netanyahu says, What's happening in America's college campuses is horrific. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over leading universities. They call for the annihilation of Israel. They attack Jewish students. They attack Jewish faculty. And maybe that's happening. I don't know. This is just what Netanyahu is saying. So... Anyway, that is on needtoknow.news. That's uh, one of the few articles I've got pulled up here. Former movie, movie mogul Harvey Weinstein, his rape conviction is overturned by New York's top court. Hmm. New York's highest court overturned Weinstein's 2020 rape conviction because the trial judge allowed three women who weren't part of the case to testify about prior uncharged alleged sexual assaults. Weinstein has not been released at this time. Soros-linked district attorney Alvin Bragg, we know who he is, he's the guy going after Trump in New York, said, we will do everything in our power to retry this case. Weinstein, 72, has been serving a 23-year sentence in a New York prison following his conviction on charges of criminal sex act. Sex act. So, I don't know, I'm not sure, but uh, that's what's uh, the latest news, and then this... As a follow-up to that, says just in, Harvey Weinstein hospitalized following transfer to Rikers Island Jail after rape conviction overturned. So, hmm, wonder if someone is trying to uh, get rid of old Harvey here or something. Who knows? Disgraced film producer was hospitalized this Saturday following his transfer back to Rikers Island, undergoing a series of medical tests. So, I don't know. Just thought I would mention what's going on with old Harvey here. So, pretty strange. And then, I mentioned this uh, a week or two ago now. Video claims U.S. ice cream treat takes 22 hours to melt. Some U.S. foods are outlawed in Europe. This is the one with the um, drumstick, remember? We talked about this. I think it was maybe two weeks ago at this point. Um, America's food supply is inundated with processed junk food, sugar, seed oils, corn, and other fillers and preservatives, and many people are starting to feel as if they've been slowly poisoned. A number of the chemical additives used in food in the U.S. are banned in Europe and other countries due to research indicating their potential cancer-causing agents. Some of these potentially harmful substances include, now get ready for this long list, potassium bromate, titanium dioxide, brominated vegetable oil, um, azodicarbamide, and propylaparabin. How about that? All completely natural, I'm sure. Don't you have a propylaparabin tree out in your backyard? U.S. agencies have failed to provide safe, healthy food and are instead focused on helping manufacturers extend the shelf life of their products and boost profits. And I would also add, shorten the shelf life of you and me and anyone else who happens to be uh, in their way. Never mind the fact that it's the American consumer that is funding them, right? By buying their terrible products. Nearly 10,000 chemicals leaching into food from plastic containers. Thousands of chemicals enter food stored in plastic containers. These chemicals have been linked to a wide array of negative health consequences, including infertility and cancer. So they're showing a bottled water picture here, which I don't know if you guys drink bottled water or not, but it's apparently super dangerous. A new study in the journal Environmental Science and Technology suggested that thousands of chemicals, a significant proportion of which scientists know nothing about, are leaching into foods from plastic containers. We found as many as 9,936 different chemicals in a single plastic product used as food packaging. 
this person said. Significant numbers of these chemicals, like bisphenol A and phyletes, I guess, are linked to a variety of health problems from reproductive issues to diabetes and even heart, heart disease and forms of cancer. Many of the chemicals, however, are totally unknown to science. So, yep. Just thought you guys would like to be aware of that. I'm sure you already are to some degree. But that article's on InfoWars. And then technocracy.news. Got three headlines here to look at. 72 types of Americans that are considered potential terrorists in official government documents. You didn't get the memo? Terrorists used to be crazy people who blew themselves up in crowds of innocent bystanders, who flew airliners into skyscrapers, killing thousands, who chanted death to America while dancing in the streets, and who raped, pillaged, and plundered for sport. Now, ordinary, peace-loving Americans are defined as terrorists. And this means you. You are a terrorist. Matter of fact, I would probably venture a guess that almost everyone watching the show would be considered terrorist by our government. That's because it's them that are pointing the finger that are the real terrorists. So all they can do is call us terrorists. No, they're cowards and they're evil. WEF boasts that 98% of central banks are adopting CBDCs. The author is correct that it's the totalitarian tiptoe because there is no other way to use blunt force to summarily drop cash on a worldwide basis. However, the WEF's boast is mostly hot air. Only two countries, Zimbabwe and Nigeria, have officially launched a CBDC. Only a few countries have passed the proof of concept phase. Several countries have canceled their CBDC projects, including the Philippines, Kenya, Denmark, uh, Equator, that says, uh, they probably mean Ecuador, and Finland. Several large countries are in the pilot stage, including China, Russia, and India. So what do you guys think about this? My guess is that it's much further along than what we're being told. And to take it a step further, they need a crisis. They need a crisis to bring in their CBDCs. Don't you think a nice little nuclear war might be that crisis that they want and uh, probably will get very soon some sort of nuclear exchange? And then they'll say, well, we have to go to a digital currency system. We just have to. How did states, cities embrace UN's 2030 Agenda Climate Action Plans how did all this garbage, pure sustainable development, a.k.a. technocracy, show up in our cities and states? Answer, a full-court barrage of UN agents. I dare you to search for your city and the words Climate Action Plan on Google. You will be shocked. I estimate that 70% of all cities already have a formal plan, and another 20% are working on it. So he wants us to do a Google search for a climate action plan in your city. So uh, I didn't realize that was part of the uh, part of the deal here. So let's try it. Let's go to uh, Google and we're going to do a Nashville climate action plan. Let's see what we get. Metro Nashville climate adaption and resilience plan. Nashville.gov. September 2023, climate change is arguably today's single greatest threat to our society. Oh, it's definitely an argument. Our survival and access to basic needs such as food, water, and shelter are being and will continue to be affected by the, clim the changing climate. Today, Nashville's inhabitants are exposed to multiple climate stressors and shocks, uh, including heat waves, severe storms, and flash flooding, and global impacts that reach our doorsteps that include increased food insecurity, supply chain volatility, and food price fluctuations, and displacement of populations from locations they have called home for decades. Yes, because they're bringing all the illegals in to um, Nashville and other places. Recent climate events have pointed to the significant gaps between planning and real-time readiness in several U.S. cities, 
with the consequence being loss of life and, cons and significant damage to built infrastructure and the bases of economy. No mention of geoengineering, though. No mention that they're already changing the climate on purpose. No, no mention of that. Nope, it's our fault for having air conditioning and driving a car. Anyway, I just thought I would do what was suggested there at technocracy.news, and I wasn't disappointed. You guys can see. Do that in your in your neck of the woods, wherever you are. Just do a search. You don't have to use Google. They're just saying you can if you want. Um, your city and climate action plan, see what you get. Yep. They're all prepared to change our lives forever. And yet the people at the top get a pass. So reclaimthenet.org, big tech sponsors event with Canadian pro-censorship justice minister advocating online censorship. There's Tampon Trudeau right there. Um, anyway, and then we've got several headlines here about, at least a couple about Brazil. Brazil's AG and Supreme Court reportedly consider shutting down access to X. Brazil's Attorney General and Supreme Federal Court are exploring drastic measures after getting called out for censorship demands. So, in response to that, they're going to shut down X. Mm -hmm. Brazil targets Twitter, Twitter files author who revealed censorship orders. Brazil's Attorney General claims his Twitter files coverage amounts to a probable crime against the state, a charge the journalist vehemently denies. FCC restores net neutrality despite concerns over government intrusion. Restoring net neutrality rules under Title II reshapes the broadband industry, placing FCC oversight at the center of Internet regulation. Rumble defies global censorship trends and takes stand against New Zealand's free speech crackdown. TSA visited Apple and Google to discuss collaboration for digital ID. TSA's push for biometric technology and digital IDs with big tech aims to streamline airport security but raises concerns over passenger privacy and government surveillance. As it should raise concerns. I know I'm concerned. Ireland's hate speech bill faces backlash amidst authoritarian fears. Ireland's proposed hate speech legislation sparks fears of an authoritarian police state with critics voicing concerns about blurred definitions and constitutional rights. Yeah, well, they are only a myth now. They don't exist. They never did. So says the um, 1984 people in charge. All right, the Liberty Beacon walkers conceal Biden's old man shuffle. Got another article pulled up about this. That was kind of funny. Yeah, they're, they're having to crowd people around him as he's walking away from the helicopter and the airplane and all that stuff to conceal his old man gate. Mm-hmm. With the presidential election more than, still more than six months away, Biden's handlers are under increasing pressure to divert Americans' eyes from his obvious and accelerating mental and physical decline. But we're not supposed to notice that. A Biden cheat sheet tells him which reporters to call on and, and what exactly they will ask him. It says, um, now comes news that Team Biden's latest stage management innovation is focused on obscuring his, frail, his frailty. Uncomfortable with the way Biden looks as he unsteadily shuffles across the White House lawn, one or more staffers now walk at his side, helping to prevent close scrutiny of his gait. I wonder why they don't put one of those. You remember when um, um, King Charles was uh, was crowned, uh, and they put that thing around him so that they could put the oil, they could uh, put the oil on him and, and and all that stuff. I'm surprised they don't come up with something like this for Biden. They'll just make him get in a little booth, and they'll just kind of scoot it along as he moves across from Marine One or Air Force One, and you won't be able to see him. Here, let's take a look here. Did Israel make a mistake? I mean, I, I'm surprised he can walk and not fall down, honestly. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely not, definitely not too many uh, brain cells active in that head, I don't think. So, anyway. 
Yeah, I've got another article on that one that uh, we'll take a look at. Worst in 70 years, Biden's approval rating absolutely dismal. Worst in 70 years. President Biden, fake, fake President Biden, has the worst job approval rating since Eisenhower during his recently completed 13th quarter in office, according to a new Gallup poll. While Biden clocks in at 38.7%, the previous low was set by George H.W. Bush at 41%. Trump and Obama averaged 46 and 45 percent, respectively, during the same point in their presidencies. Prior to Bush, Carter was the only other president with a sub-50 percent average in his 13th quarter. Mm-hmm. Nixon, Reagan, Clinton, and George W. Bush averaged between 51 and 55 percent. So, not that it matters, but it is kind of interesting. And I would say that that 38% is probably high. But that's what Gallup says. And they would never lie. Zelensky wants 10 more years of U.S. funding. The Ukrainian leader has claimed he's working on a long-term assistance package from Washington. Long-term. He hasn't gotten enough hundreds of billions of dollars. So, yes, he wants long-term help. Will there even be anyone left in Ukraine after, let alone, I mean, I would say in the next year or two versus 10 years. I mean, they're pretty much annihilating everyone over there. They're forcing people, they're forcing the conscription, the draft and so forth over there. They're literally taking people off the sidewalk and making them fight for Ukraine. Anyway, yeah. So Zelensky wants 10 more years of U.S. funding. Not too surprising. I saw this and uh, wasn't too surprised, but n not really liking this too much. Tennessee advances bill regulating social media use by minors. So now Tennessee is going to try and become the mommy and daddy. Tennessee General Assembly on Wednesday sent a bill to Governor Lee that would require parental consent before a minor could open a social media account the law would also require social media platforms to verify users' ages and close down the pre-existing accounts of any minors whose parents don't provide their express consent for their ongoing use. Hmm. Social media companies must also provide parents who do not consent with a method of monitoring their, social, their child's social media usage. How does the state plan to enforce this law? The law threatens social media companies with legal consequences if they allow minors to open accounts on their apps without a parent's consent or if a parent cannot access their child's pre-existing account. Never mind the fact that most of the kids that are opening these accounts already know way more than their parents do about apps and how to do these things, and they can just pretend that they're the parent and give themselves their okay. Right? Isn't that going to be happening? The governor has yet to sign the bill into law, but the text says it will go the text says it will go into effect immediately upon becoming law. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that that is the state's job whatsoever. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously you want to try and protect kids, but it's it's up to the parents, not the state. In my opinion, next people's voice article I have pulled up popular TikTok influencer admits Biden paid her to spread dangerous propaganda. But I guess it's okay because he paid her a lot of money. Popular TikTok influencer has confessed that the Biden regime paid her taxpayer dollars to spread U.S. government propaganda to the masses. According to this person, Farah, I guess, she was paid by the Biden White House to spread woke identity politics and shill for his far-left policies. I was doing full-on political propaganda. I wonder if she has any regrets about that, because why would she be talking about it? Uh, Infowars says, Funny thing is, they were like, do not disclose this is an ad, because they're like, technically, it's not a product, so you don't have to disclose it's an ad, because I think they just wanted some, some like edgy girl of color to just tell people. Like when they nominated Supreme Court Justice Contangi Brown Jackson, they were like, can you say like, there's a lot of likes in this article, as a person of color, you feel reflected. It's like a white woman emailing this to me and she was like giving me this script and I'm like, no. And every other word is like like this and like that. Anyways, 
I was looking to see how much was paid to her. I don't really see that number, but maybe it's on the video here. I don't know. No, that's about the, the vaccines. Here's the uh, here's an article here in a video embedded. So who knows, but the point is they paid her to spread propaganda. Not a shocker. Bill Gates unveils AI that will replace podcasters and newscasters. Podcasters and newscasters. Hmm. Gates, Microsoft has unveiled a new program called VASA, V-A-S-A, that creates lifelike talking faces of virtual characters with appealing visual effective skills, V-A-S, given a single static image and a speech audio clip. That's all they need. Well, it says, according to the AI division at Microsoft, the tech giant has been secretly working on the program so that podcasters and TV hosts and newscasters can be completely replaced with AI. Our premier model, VASA 1, note that it's very similar to NASA, VASA 1 is capable of not only producing lip movements that are exquisitely synchronized with the audio, but also capturing a large spectrum of facial nuances and natural head motions that contribute to the perception of authenticity and liveliness. Bill Gates' team wrote in a paper about these latest developments. So apparently these people here are all AI. Natural News is reporting this. Core innovations include a holistic facial dynamics and head movement generation model that works in a face latent space and the development of such an expression and disentangled face latent space using videos. How about that? Anyways, yeah, high quality deep fakes and so forth. Well, I guess your newscasters will be all AI generated starting in the very near future, most likely. Um, but not on this show, not on this show whatsoever, because there's no AI that would be generated that would talk about the things that I talk about. So you don't have to worry about that. Anyways, and uh, let's see, I've got a, a few more from People's Voice. So let's take a look at uh, maybe one more here, and then we'll play a video. Rep. Thomas Massey warns Congress is planning to make criticism of Israel a criminal offense. Massey has warned that Congress is planning to pass a new hate speech law that will make the criticism of Israel a criminal offense in America. Some of my colleagues are introducing legislation to create federally sanctioned anti-Semitism monitors at colleges. Massey said, I will vote no, he said. Policing speech, religion, and assembly is not the role of the federal government. In fact, it's expressly prohibited by the U.S. Constitution. He went on. Mm-hmm. I guess that doesn't matter anymore, though, does it? There's a bipartisan effort in Congress to equate criticism of secular state of Israel to violence toward Jewish people in America. Massey said in a follow-up tweet, The latter is illegal, and the former is protected speech. But if a false equivalency is established, it will be forbidden to criticize Israel. And how long until it's forbidden to criticize others? Like, for instance, Democrats or those in charge forever. It will be illegal. It will be a crime, a criminal offense. Or what about talking about certain subject matter? Um, you won't be able to talk about that. Maybe how terrible these guys are, for instance. You won't be able to talk about that at all. Which you already can't, to some degree, at least not on social media. Note that I'm doing it. I'm doing it anyway. But um, I won't be able to leave this video up on my YouTube channel, obviously, for, for those sorts of reasons. But um, anyway, let's take a look at this video. I thought it was pretty interesting, and we'll be right back. Yeah, how about that? The uh, X, Twitter X logo right in the middle of the picture there as it was fading out. Yes, I think they're planning on using the Twitter X logo and therefore Elon Musk as Disease X. Because they're trying to get rid of him, aren't they? Anyway, yeah, pretty interesting. And um, I think that that was a, a pretty good report on what's happening there. I was, was realizing as I was watching that, though, that so much of that has um, just Japanese speaking in it. I'm probably not going to be able to leave that um, video in the audio version of this show because unless you speak Japanese, it probably won't make much sense. So don't be surprised if I cut that out of the uh, audio podcast a little bit later when I um, post that on my Substack and also on Spotify and um, Apple Podcasts. So, yep. If you missed that last week, um, I am on those other, I'm on those other two platforms now too, as far as an audio version of this show. 
All right, well, let's keep moving on here. We've got People's Voice, another couple more articles from there. Religious leaders warn red heifers in Israel signs, signals the end of the world is near. I don't know about the end of the world, but this is says this article says religious leaders around the globe have warned that the presence of red heifers in Israel marks the beginning of the end of the world. It's not just Christian religious leaders, even Muslim leaders have been in uproar over the arrival of the red heifers to Israel. I thought they were genetically engineered. Does that not matter? I guess it doesn't matter. Allisrael.com reports marking the 100th day of the Gaza war, Hamas spokesman said Jews bringing red cows to Israel was part of the reason for the Al-Aqsa flood in, on October 7th. According to both groups, the arrival of the red heifers in Israel is a sign that Jews will soon try to rebuild their temple, possibly even destroying the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. And they don't mean Jesus Christ. They mean the Moshiach. And I don't disagree with that. I think that's very, um, very feasible. I don't know that it will get destroyed with like a missile or anything like that. I think it will need to be something a little less obvious, probably a tectonic weapon, highly targeted. Uh, and they can do that. So watch for that. Earthquake in Israel, earthquake in Jerusalem, and it just happens to shake the Temple Mount enough that it renders the Al-Aqsa Mosque unusable. And gee, it's just too bad. We have to tear it down now. See where it's going? That's personally what I think would happen versus it getting um, destroyed with um, some sort of weaponry or something. Um, but it's hard to say. It says, Some American evangelicals are excited about the red heifers believing their arrival signals the second coming of Jesus. So anyway, there is an article about the Red Heifers on peoplesvoice.tv. And note, we have not heard a single thing about any sacrifices of any Red Heifers on Passover or any day since then, which was now, I guess, some six days ago, since it was supposed to have happened. And now it seems like everyone has dropped the story. Well, not here. I will uh, continue to report on the Red Heifers as soon as I hear more information or find it. Um, I do think that they probably will sacrifice one red heifer. They don't need to sacrifice all of them. And in fact, I don't know that all of them would qualify. But um, one is all they need. And I do think that they will do that sometime between now and November. October, November. Um, because at that point, or I should say after that point, I think that they're too old. They will be too old. But of course, if they're genetically engineered, they can get some more anytime they want. So, who knows? Who knows? Just a guess. So, and then one more article from this site. Liberal world order must be destroyed, says the Hungarian PM, Viktor Orban. The value system that has dominated the West and brought chaos to the world, meaning liberalism and the people running our country, is about to end, according to Viktor Orban, Hungarian Prime Minister. He claims that Western liberal Hegemony has failed and must be destroyed and believes it could end as soon as this year. Hmm. Well, one could hope. This year we may see the end of Western liberal hegemony as the, or hegemony, however you say it, as the world order built on it collapses. Addressing the Conservative Political Action Committee, or Committee, Political Action Conference, CPAC, in Hungary, in Budapest, Orban criticize the existing world order based on progressive liberal, liberal hegemony, saying it has spawned numerous figureheads who are not fit to be leaders with even beauty pageants knowing more about peace than they do. Yeah, to say the least. Alright, we have information liberation, and this is an article that I already mentioned. Massey warns Congress is trying to pass hate speech laws to outlaw criticism of Israel. The ADL urged Congress to pass FISA law spying on Americans to protect Israel. So again, we're talking about more pro-Israel stuff, and they're, um, you know, they're going to try and quote protect Israel, which means they're going to take away our rights, or try to. Sniper seen on roof, overlooking pro-Palestinian protest at IU, Indiana University. Hmm. 
Axios poll, majority of Americans now want mass deportations. That's because we're realizing that we're slowly being taken over. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I don't think that's going to happen. TikTok will shut down rather than sell to U.S. investors if ban not overturned in the courts. Mike, Mike Johnson pushes debunked lie that Israeli babies were cooked in ovens on October the 7th. Of course he does. It, here's, here's Netanyahu again. It has to be stopped. Netanyahu demands Netanyahu demands pro-Palestine protests at U.S. colleges be shut down. And then more of that. These protesters belong in jail. Governor Abbott from Texas. Cheers. Arrest of pro-Palestinian protesters at UT Austin. Wow. Interesting. So, quite a few uh, articles over here on information liberation. A friend of mine sent me this, uh, you may have seen the article here about the, or maybe a video that you saw about the um, the horses, the runaway steeds. This says what was what was wrong with the household cavalry's horses yesterday, which was now several days ago. New video shows animals spooked with a rider thrown to the ground and injured in separate incident to the one that saw runaway steeds careering Careering through London, blood-covered horses run loose through London. Bloodied military horses from the household cavalry dash freely through the streets of London. Five of them broke loose during exercise after throwing their riders. White horse from caval cavalry with blood up to the bridle. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I think he cut himself. I think that's probably why he's so um, bloody there. Blood-covered horse London on Wednesday, April 24th, so now four days ago. A series of events unfolded in central London involving a group of military horses from the household cavalry, which caused chaos and injuries. According to reports, the horses, include, including one covered in blood, broke loose during an exercise routine and ran amok through the streets of London, colliding with vehicles and causing damage. The incident occurred during rush hour and... Eyewitnesses describe the scene as total mayhem as the horses, including a white horse with blood on its chest, galloped through the streets. The horses were seen running through iconic landmarks such as Tower Bridge and the Strand, causing widespread disruption and panic. At least four people were injured, including soldiers and civilians, civilians and were taken to the hospital for treatment. The horses, which were part of the household Cavalry are used in ceremonial duties for royal events and are considered elite animals. Royal events. Hmm. And along those lines, Hugo Talks put out a, uh, an interesting vid video called Behold a Pale Horse about this incident. So you might want to take a look at that if you want. I'll link to this over on uh, Substack when I put this out on my Substack post where I link to all of the articles and make sure you're on that list if you're not already. Diamonddisc.substack.com is where that is. Link is in the upper right corner in the black box. Health Impact News. This is a sister site to Vaccine Impact, which is a site that I often report stories from, articles from. Freedom of speech and freedom of religion die in America. Zionism is now the only religion allowed in the U.S. Mm -hmm. See where they're going with this? Um, it seems to me like, uh, well, I guess you could say that it's uh, it's definitely headed towards um, a one world order here for sure. Uh, with this being the only religion allowed, and it's not Christianity, note, it's not even Judaism, it's Zionism. Protests against the genocide happening in Gaza have continued to increase across America with thousands of students in American universities and colleges protesting against the daily mass murders of innocent civilians and children happening in Israel. Or in Gaza, actually, is where it is. Last week, over 100 students were arrested at Columbia University in New York, with many students at other, at other campuses all across the nation joining them in protest this past weekend. Yep, they are trying to ban free speech, certainly on uh, campuses, unless you're saying the thing that they agree with. If you're saying what they agree with, you can talk all day long. But that is not free speech, is it? LeoHoman.com. 
Cashless Society, new report over 98% of world central banks gearing up for a new system of programmable, trackable digital cash in 24 nations will have live CBDCs by 2030. Oh, I think it'll probably happen before that. All this despite almost zero coverage in the mainstream corporate media to date, most of which still refers to a fully digitized monetary system as a conspiracy theory. Yeah, that is a little hurdle that they will need to overcome. The era of cash money is nearing its end, and with it will come the end of privacy. The World Economic Forum claims in a new report 98% of the world's central banks have agreed to implement the globalist's long-awaited dream of a cashless society. I think they probably mean 98% of the world's central banks that they will allow to continue existing. That's my guess. And that only needs to be like one. Just a guess. Most central banks, such as the U.S. Federal Reserve, are quasi-government institutions. No, it's not government institution. Owned by private billionaire bankers, for sure. Yes. And the WEF is not the first to reveal plans of the globalist elite, which have been preparing for years to eliminate paper fiat currencies, but this latest report indicates the grand plan is now very close to being realized. Perhaps just awaiting a triggering event, a black swan event of some type, before making the switch to digital cash. Yep, that's what I've been saying for a long time. Triggering event. And it may be some sort of a meltdown type thing, um, but I personally think it's probably going to be some nuclear exchange, nuclear event, as in nuclear war. Um, not in not in the terms of everyone annihilated, but all it needs to be is a nuclear a nuclear explosion going off in one place somewhere, and then they will lock everyone down. They will take away everyone's rights, just based on that one thing. All right, so let's take a look at some of the uh, weather warfare happening. You guys may have heard about this already. Devastating footage shows horrific aftermath of tornadoes that barreled through Nebraska and Iowa, with one town almost completely flattened. Hundreds of homes were flattened, ripped from their foundations, or had their roofs torn off when tornadoes barreled through two states. The first twister hit Elkhorn, Nebraska, on the outskirts of Omaha about 4 o'clock on Friday, where it wrecked at least six homes, all of them newly built, and damaged dozens more. So, I don't know if you guys have seen any of these pictures, but pretty, inc pretty incredible, actually. Terrifying video shows tornadoes sweeping across... Nebraska town. You, look at that. Pretty amazing. I've got one other um, video clip that we can check out here in a few minutes that, that's more of the same thing. Pretty amazing video footage. All right. Paul Craig Roberts. The March to the Third World War continues. This is actually also on Leo Homan's website. It's a bit of a different perspective from a wise elder statesman, economist, scholar, and journalist, Paul Craig Roberts. Could Putin be exercising too much restraint for his own good and the good of the Russian people? And could that restraint be could that restraint end up backfiring into a nuclear fought world war? These are the questions examined by Roberts in the must read article below. So yeah, feel free to look at that if interested. LeoHoman.com. From the wine press. Um, back to the weather thing here for just a second. Dubai underwater after cloud seeding experiments create massive storms, but media attempts to walk it back. So this is from a few days ago now. It, I had some friends send me different videos on um, Dubai. But yeah, you guys may know about this already. Last week in Dubai, in UAE, experienced unprecedented levels of rain flooded the desert city, bringing the city to a complete standstill, and residents looked to swim their way out of the mess. Flights have been grounded, Cars can barely go anywhere, some people have been pronounced dead, and the tedious cleanup work has hardly gotten underway. So, more about the uh, the happenings there as far as um, some of the flooding. So, yeah. But, yeah, the admitted cloud seeding experiments didn't really go as planned. Or maybe it did. Tech company debuts the Therminator. The Therminator. A robo-dog with a flamethrower. Because if you're going to have a robo-dog, you would need 
the flamethrower accessory. A robotics company called Throw Flame recently debuted a new robot dog with an attached flamethrower on its back, boasting to be the first in the world and the last in the world. A robot dog with a flamethrower. I mean, what else could you want? And look, it's a bargain basement price of only $9,420. So you too can have a robo dog with a flamethrower. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, that's on Wine Press. Canada's Trudeau introduces halal mortgages to increase Muslims' participation in the housing market. And it does they do not have to pay any interest. Isn't that nice? The 2024 federal budget says the Liberal government plans to introduce halal mortgages as a way to increase access to home ownership. They're probably not doing it for the non-Muslims, though, are they? You'd have to be a Muslim, so I guess you have to convert to be a Muslim to get no interest. Don't you think they'll have a mass exodus to Islam? What does Canada's 2024 budget say? The plan mentions the creation of an alternative financing products, including halal mortgages, as a means to enable Muslim Canadians and other diverse communities to further participate in the housing market. Mm -hmm. Ottawa is exploring, quote-unquote, measures that could change the tax treatment of these products or provide a new regulatory sandbox for financial service providers, it says. Sandbox, that's one of those catchphrases that people use all the terms they, all the time. They love the term sandbox. Um, the government began consultations in March 2024 with financial service providers in diverse communities as it sets out to expand mortgage policies to include alternative financing and budget ads. The Liberal government says it will make an announcement detailing what such a plan would look like this fall. So yes, halal mortgages. They're interest-free, and all you have to do is convert to Islam. Mm -hmm. Yep. And wear your hijab and your burqa and be silent. And never, ever criticize Trudeau and his government. Microsoft launches scary AI technology that can create deepfakes with just a single photo and an audio clip. I mentioned this a little while ago, but this is more on the VASA-1. VASA-1 no relation to NASA. Never a straight answer. Um, but I'm sure there's a good acronym we could come up with for VASA1. Yeah, that's on Wine Press. And then we've got some articles from Gateway Pundit just in. $61 billion was just the beginning. Ukrainian President Zelensky announces 10-year funding agreement with the U.S. All for glory to Ukraine. No, I think they mean... Money in Zelensky's pocket. It's not about glory to Ukraine. It's about more coke for his nose. Ukrainian President Zelensky, after speaking with Democrat House leader Hakeem Jeffries, announced on Sunday the U.S. and Ukraine are, quote, working on fixing specific levels of support for this year and for the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. This will likely supersede President Trump's authority on the matter if passed. President Trump. So, anyway. Yep. That's what they have planned. They're going to keep funding this war forever. thought this was kind of interesting. Former rock vocalist. I'd never heard of her before. Maybe you guys have. Sherry Curry denounces Democrats, calls Obama a terrible president in blistering critique. Voting for Democrats now just makes you a fool. So she probably doesn't want to continue working in the music business, is my guess. If she just came out and did all this publicly. Sherry Curry, former lead vocalist, former lead vocalist of the iconic 1970s rock band The Runaways, has delivered a vehement condemnation of the Democrat Party and former President Obama. Former rock vocalist took to her social media to vent her frustrations from economic issues to foreign policy and even accused the party of fostering racial division. Yeah, because they don't do that. No, not at all. It used to be punk rock and roll to vote Democrat. I fell for it, Curry wrote. But when your party demands you live in fear, squalor, beyond your means by just having by just buying groceries, gasoline, disrespecting our veterans, our police, our elderly, supporting criminals, chaos, riots, Hamas, 
failing Israel, demeaning us at every turn, hurting our children, wasting our money, ineptitude with every policy, lies and more lies, no more. The Democrat Party can kiss my arse, she says. They don't give a darn. That's true. This is a family show, so that's why I'm kind of editing as I go here. Voting Dem used to be cool. I can't think of a moment when it was, but she says it was. But now it just makes you a fool. So good for her. She's uh, she's at least going out on a limb here. Hopefully she's um, not also then saying how wonderful Republicans are because <laughs> they're just as bad. But... Um, that's what I'm saying. I don't think she wants to continue working in the music business because that's a really good way to get blacklisted. Anyways, so there's uh, Sherry Curry of, who was it? The Runaways. All right, here's the tornado footage we got to watch. Man captures stunning footage of massive tornado in Nebraska. So here it is. Well, before, let me give you the, the backup, the back story here. Video going viral on social media shows footage of massive tornado caught on camera by a man driving in Nebraska. Sometimes it's easy to forget the power and force of nature and then something like this happens to remind us all. So yep and here is the clip. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Here it is. Yeah, so the guy stopped to, uh, I guess, probably help the the um, big rig driver there. So, yeah, that's pretty wild, huh? Violent tornado just crossed Interstate 80, Lincoln, Nebraska. This was um, on the 26th. So, yeah, that is some crazy footage right there. It looked like those cars were trying to outrun the tornado. Not sure that's a good idea. But, anyway, pretty incredible, for sure. Uh, O'Keefe Media Group, James O'Keefe is to release, quote, the most important story of his entire career. He says, I have evidence that exposes the CIA and it's on camera. And in other news, James O'Keefe really needs to watch his back. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that can get you, um, let's just say, gotten rid of. James O'Keefe on Friday said he's about to release the most important story of his entire career. He should just release it. Don't announce it. I have evidence that exposes the CIA and it's on camera. I am working on releasing a story that I believe is the most important in my entire career. Um, I like James O'Keefe. I do not think this is very smart. I mean, if, unless you don't like living. Do you think it's a coincidence that right at this moment I am subject to an endless series of attacks, he said. This is obviously a sophisticated information operation designed to stop me from releasing this story. I'm sure you, I'm sure you recognize they are masters of using half-truths and innuendos to raise doubts against people who don't deserve it. It's meant to concern, consume my time and energy and make me back down. But I'm going to let it work. Rest assured, nothing will stop me from releasing this story. I wish he would just go ahead and put it out and not announce it. That is super dangerous. I mean, if it has to do with the CIA or any government entities like that. So just be careful, James. Man, he's doing some good work, but I don't think that's very smart. Buckingham Palace announces that King Charles will return to his public duties, but rumors about his poor health are generating major controversy. And that's how they say it in England. It is a running mystery in the UK and around the world. What exactly is the state of Charles's health? Everyone's considering that, but it's anathema to ask. Yes, you can't ask that. 
It says, on the surface, Buckingham Palace has announced that the king is returning to his public duties, which would, of course, imply that, his, that he is improving in health. But reports arise that are commenting on the increasing chatter that Charles' health is much worse than aides are suggesting. So, says Daily Beast, which is uh, highly dependable, right? says, speaking to friends of the king in recent weeks about his health, the most common response is a lowering of the voice by half an octave. Half an octave? Uh, his voice was already fairly low. So half an octave or so, followed by the somber, drawn-out pronouncement. It is not good. It's not good. Palace officials won't publicly comment on that, of course. Since his aides disclosed the king's cancer diagnosis earlier this year, they also specified that they wouldn't be providing a running commentary on his health. The king has never said what specific type of cancer he has been diagnosed with, apart from to say it was not prostate cancer. He is understood to be making regular visits to London for radiotherapy treatment, which can be used to treat many different types of cancer. Um, anyway, who knows? Who knows? But they're officially, the official story is that he will be returning to some of his public duties. I don't know. I don't know. We will see. We will see. Um, it could be a ruse. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll follow up on that story as we find out more. Watch Rogan mocks CNN's bad ratings. Way more people listen to my podcast, he says. Joe Rogan mocked CNN's poor ratings while talking about how the network attacked him in 2021. CNN had allegedly played Rogan's video discussing his treatment plan after editing it to make him appear more yellow and sickly. Yeah, they did do that. I saw that footage. Rogan took a dig at the network by noting that he was not worried about their negative coverage because his podcast has more viewers. They, don't, they didn't understand that I have way more people that listen to my podcast than they have. Way more. And that's actually true. Let me see if the numbers are mentioned here. Yeah, it says it's difficult to gauge the total audiences of Rogan and CNN since both are spread onto multiple platforms. Bloomberg reported last month that Spotify tested a feature disclosing podcast numbers and Rogan had a fourteen had fourteen point five million followers, making him nearly three times more popular than the next popular the next most popular podcast, that number would also be would also massively dwarf CNN's cable numbers. Uh, Rogan had also began posting episodes to YouTube again after a more exclusive arrangement with Spotify. The episode with this guy Sing has brought more than six hundred thousand viewers there. So, anyway, kind of interesting, and I bring all that up because I wanted to mention that my good friend. Bart Sabrell was just on Joe Rogan's show, The Joe Rogan Experience, a couple days ago. And uh, we'll link to that in the Substack post. And I'll show you a, uh, not really a clip of it so much as just the, um, just a still shot of it. And you can kind of check that out if you guys want to. Police investigate disturbing incident. You guys may have seen this. After a man caught on live TV bizarrely biting, bizarrely biting a young boy's ear at the World Snooker Championship. So I don't know if you guys saw this. Authorities are conducting an investigation after a man was captured on live TV bizarrely biting a young boy's ear. Yeah, and the, and the kid doesn't even flinch. It's like he's totally used to it. He didn't, like, turn around and look at this guy and question what was going on. He was used to it. You could tell. Um, during the World Snooker Championship in Sheffield, England, South Yorkshire police are reviewing the footage following the incident, which was brought to public attention due to the widespread concern after a clip was shared on social media. Yes, AJ. Um, AJ showed that on his uh, Twitter X account. I, don't, I know other other people probably did as well. But yeah. And what is snooker anyway? Was it like, uh, is it kind of like pool or something? I don't know. Yeah, it is very bizarre. But it is a uh, Sodom and Gomorrah type of world that we live in now, isn't it? Rep. Adam Crazy Eyes Schiff, his car was ransacked in San Francisco 
forcing him to give a speech in his hiking vest. But it was okay. He was he was fine with that. Says Democrat Congressman Adam Schiff had his car vandalized in San Francisco this week, forcing him to attend a dinner party without the appropriate attire. San Francisco Chronicle reports that Schiff was given a rude introduction to the crime-ridden city as he works to drum up support for his senatorial campaign. Says, uh, hello to the city, goodbye to your luggage. That was Schiff's rude introduction to Frisco's vexing reputation for car burglaries Thursday when thieves swiped the bags from his car while it sat in downtown parking garage. Mm Mm-hmm. I guess it probably couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. So he had to give his speech in his hiking vest. So, kind of interesting. Very strange. Activistpost.com. Uh, let's see, a few of the headlines. One of them is the scramble for Antarctica. Kind of weird. I think they just mean um, trying to get there for uh, resources, oil and so forth. Um, let's see what else we got. California homeowners insured no more amid fire danger. America's homelessness crisis is worsening. Border crisis is being used to push digital ID. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Video about the eclipse. DARPA drone, UFO, or deep fake. So, lots of interesting things over there on activistpost.com. We just looked at the headlines, but you guys can check that out if you're interested. All right, not the B.com. Leave it to mainstream media to take a simple moral question, make it into a repulsive crusade that says, We fixed that headline there for you, AP. Tennessee lawmakers, okay, Bill, criminalizing adults who help minors receive gen- gender affirming care. Says the Tennessee's GOP controlled state house on Thursday gave their final approval to legislation penalizing adults who help minors who help minors receive gen- gender affirming care without parental consent, clearing the way for the first in the nation proposal to be sent to Governor Bill Lee's desk for his signature. Governor Lee's sure making the headlines lately with different things, including the uh, geoengineering ban and all these other things. Yeah, gender-affirming care, quote-unquote, is what they're calling it. I think they mean mutilation. It says, uh, AP is reporting Tennessee lawmakers okay bill criminalizing adults who help minors receive mutilation. Uh, the question here is whether or not medical officials and activists should be able to help underage people access synthetic sex hormones and life-altering genital surgeries without their parents' consent I don't think this one's too hard. Violations of the law, according to the p- the pearl clutching AP, could range from talking to an adolescent about a website on where to find care to help that young person travel to another state with looser restrictions on mutilation services. Uh, frankly, I don't think the bill goes far enough. It should criminalize, not just penalize, this kind of activity. I agree. And it should be outlawed even if the minors in question have parental consent. It should not be called legal at all to do that to your kid. It's properly called child abuse. Trump says, correct. Note that Tennessee is passing this law as other places are going in precisely the opposite and wrong direction. So Sacramento, this is not to be post here, Sacramento votes unanimously to become first transgender sanctuary city. This includes kids' um, gender transitions. But these sorts of laws are necessary. They need to happen. The consensus around transgenderism, particularly as it applies to children, appears ready to break. So Arnold says, hmm. Glad to see Republicans taking a stand like this. It's a good start. Okay, anyway, that's on notthebee.com is where that one is. And one more from this site. Russell Brand. Uh, got some Russell Russell Brand haters out there, I know. Some of you guys uh, have... I've played Russell Brand videos in the past, just once or twice maybe, on this show, and I always get comments of people who really like him or really hate him. 
But I thought this was kind of interesting. Russell Brand says he's taking the plunge this Sunday and will be baptized as a Christian. I think that was today. Actor, comedian, philosopher, and all-around interesting dude, Brand has been publicly moving towards professing his faith in Christ for some time now. This weekend, he's taking the plunge. So let's see what you guys think about this. And be reborn. This Sunday, I'm taking the plunge. I'm getting baptized. At the moment, I'm very curious as to what you who have been baptized feel about it, what your expectations are of the event prior, and what it's actually like. What's been explained to me is it's an opportunity to die and be reborn, an opportunity to leave the past behind and be reborn in Christ's name, like it says in Galatians, that you can live as an enlightened and awakened person. Sometimes I think of non-Christian perspectives on it, like Marcus Aurelius saying, you are already dead, now live the rest of your life properly, or the Buddhist saying, put down the corpse. All of these things seem so inviting and beautiful. I know a lot of people are sort of cynical about the increasing interest in Christianity and the return to God, but to me it's obvious as meaning deteriorates in the modern world, as our value systems and institutions crumble, all of us become increasingly aware that there is this eerily familiar awakening and beckoning figure that we've all known all of our lives within us and around us. And for me it's very exciting. One of my concerns is I'm thinking about doing it in the River Thames, so I could be getting sort of baptised in toxoplasmosis and E. coli based on what I've learned. So I may be leaving behind the sins, but I might be picking up some pretty serious viruses. Let me know what you guys think about it and how you feel about it. Thanks. That is pretty funny. Yes, he might pick up a few other things he didn't really bet on if he's going to get baptised in the River Thames. Some histoplasmosis and toxoplasmosis and who knows what else but what a mess but I would say congratulations to Mr. Brand here I thought that was good I was just looking at chat here welcome brother welcome brother Russell cowboy says yeah I think it's wonderful for anyone to be baptized doesn't make a difference who who it is God knows the heart yeah and uh, I would agree with that I think it's I think it's really great and you know he I've heard him talk enough that I've, I've I guess really felt like he's more new agey. So hopefully that will kind of um, subside and that he will um, really be blessed and that the Holy Spirit will come into his life. I really hope that for him. I think that he, he has a huge reach. So just imagine, I mean, someone like him being out there talking about Jesus. I, mean, I think that's huge, huge. I think it's a big deal. So anyway, this is on uh, notthebee.com. thought that was pretty interesting. You may have already heard about that. I just thought that was kind of neat. And if not, I wanted to make sure I mentioned it tonight. From modernity.news, I mentioned this one earlier as well. Biden's handlers attempting to, su- to hide the fact that he can barely walk. Desperate strategy implemented to flank him as he shuffles in front of cameras. So yeah, they're trying to hide him in a desperate way of um, being able to cover this up like so many other things that they're doing, like all of the crimes that they're doing at the same time. Joe Biden is now surrounded by handlers when moving around in front of the press in a desperate effort to disguise the fact that he can't walk. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's on modernity.news. And then vaccine impact. A couple articles here. Speaker Johnson, quote, anti-Semitism is a virus, end quote. Um... University faculty and Jewish rabbis join students in the largest anti-war protests on U.S. campuses since the Vietnam War. So, yeah, censor the voices of non-Zionist Jews. Orthodox Jews opposing Zionism. How about that? So there are some out there. And then this one I mentioned earlier as well when it was on Health Impact News, but this is the same story, same article. Freedom of speech and freedom of religion die in America. Zionism is now the only religion allowed in the U.S. So those articles are on Vaccine Impact, and let's see. Geo watched this week, Tornado Outbreak. We just watched uh, some pretty incredible footage just a minute ago. Generational Tornado Outbreak, quote, quote unquote. And huge hailstorm causes extensive damage could challenge records. 
Both new headlines are from AccuWeather. Our atmospheric pressure zone manipulation and chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operation core components behind these headlines. The latest surface UV radiation readings are beyond grim. The ozone layer is nearing functional collapse, which would mean the end of crop production along with most life on Earth. Coral reefs are dying all over the world in parallel with imploding fish populations, but nothing to worry about. The military industrial complex is spending more than ever on triggering bigger and better weapons of mass destruction. Welcome to the asylum. So that's Dane's report this week. Dane Wigginton on geoengineeringwatch.org. Highly recommended. Um, you can watch the uh, full broadcast there on YouTube. And let's see here. Yeah, we, we took out just a tiny bit this week, but not much. I think it's pretty much the full broadcast. We, we might have removed a minute or two of some questionable stuff that YouTube might have might not like. However, most of what is there is there. Uh, if you want the full broadcast, you could find it on Spotify and also on his BitChute channel or Rumble channel. Might ha have an extra minute or two on those broadcasts, on those platforms. So feel free to look at that if you're interested. If you haven't already heard it, make sure you're on our uh, email list. Right here is where you sign up. Sign up list on geowatch, geoengineeringwatch.org. I say we because I'm helping Mr. Dane with the website and the newsletter and the um, the audio podcast, the videos and stuff like that that he does. So I've been working with Mr. Dane for quite a long time. About 10 years at this point. So yeah. Very interesting. And then this is the uh, the new NOAA map. It was a little different than I expected. I figured it would be a flip-flop from the week before, but actually it's, it's showing above temperatures everywhere, except for the extreme western part of Northern California and um, extreme southwestern Oregon. That's about it. Otherwise, it's above normal everywhere else. So chances are, if you're seeing this, it's going to be pretty warm, pretty hot. Over the next, well, this starts May 4th. May 4th through May 8th. So, coming up. Anyway, just wanted to let you guys know what the scheduled weather was going to be like coming up. Now, my good friend, Mr. Bart Sabrell, another client and friend of mine. I, I handle his website as well. And um, Bart is well known for being the quote-unquote moon man. He's the guy out there who has, for decades at this point, been talking about and proving that the 1969, July 1969 moon landing that supposedly happened with Neil Armstrong and company was all faked. It was all fraud. None of it's true. Very little of it uh, actually happened. And, um, you know, they did certain elements of it, like the spacewalk, they, they, not the spacewalk, but the, um, the, uh, low orbit flight, they did do that, and then they brought the capsules back down and splashed them into the water to make it look like uh, they were being picked up after having been to the moon. But there's so many other discrepancies, so many other things he talks about, and he was uh, recently back from, he, he lives in the Philippines now, so he was recently in Austin just this last week, and um, we were busy updating his website with the new book that he has put out, and he was on InfoWars, and he was on Joe Rogan's show. So there is uh, Bart on the, uh, the show called American Journal with um, Harrison Smith, who I think does a really good job. The CIA kidnaps and drugs journalist for revealing moon landing hoax. Bart Sabrell is an award-winning filmmaker, writer, and investigative journalist who is best known for his skepticism of the Apollo moon landings. Throughout his works, he has revealed the official... CIA codename for the real Apollo project, the military base where the first staged moon landing was filmed, and the names of 15 U.S. government scientists and officials who were in attendance for the first moon landing falsification, some of whom are still alive today. You can find Bart on YouTube at Bart Sabrell one or by visiting his website at sabrell.com, which is right here, and I maintain the website for him. If you don't believe me, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you will see, well, it's, here, let me turn my picture off here. All right, you'll see me, um, have, I've vanished. 
But look in the um, bottom left-hand corner, website managed by Diamond Digital Media. So anyway, there it is. And um, yep, he has um, put out a new book. This uh, Moon Man book is the book that he was being interviewed on InfoWars about and also on Joe Rogan's show. It's really good, really good. It, it, uh, it kind of catalogs the whole story here. True story of a filmmaker who's on the CIA hit list from the man behind the infamous A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon film, which that's actually embedded right here on the website. We have it right here for you. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's really good. And I'll try to link to that separately on the Substack post um, that I put out tomorrow. Now, this is the other thing that we put out in anticipation of him being on Joe Rogan's show. We wanted to make sure we got his new book out. It's called Aliens from Planet X. And it is not uh, its not really fiction. It is what Bart believes is going to happen. And he thinks it's what we're in for. And um, I don't disagree. Let me read the little synopsis here for you. Let me turn the uh, chat off just for a second so you guys can see it, what I'm reading. Aliens from Planet X, their origin and future appearance. The culmination of filmmaker investigative journalist Bart Sabrell's decades-long research about the elusive topic of aliens as well as the recently discovered possibility of a dangerous rogue planet, Planet X, passing by the Earth in the near future with potentially catastrophic global consequences. He and I have talked about this before, and we are very much on the same page. Sabrell's investigation contained herein reveals how our corrupt world leaders may use the passing of Planet X for their long-planned revealing of aliens, quote-unquote, which may actually be interdimensional beings rather than extraterrestrial, which have secretly been here for millennia, millennia, helping their kindred world leaders stay in power. Though historic revelations of a secret bloodline of these world leaders, Sabrell demonstrates a potential coming grand deception by the prolific liars who run the governments of the world. While the top two UFO researchers in the world finally concluded that UFOs are indeed real, they both surprisingly also concluded that UFOs are not from outer space. Rather, they are from Earth in hidden dimensions. And that aliens have been here since the start of humanity who have, as their ultimate goal, the eradication of mankind. Prepare yourself for startling revelations about potentially life-changing future events that may hold life and death in the balance for every person on Earth. That is available currently in print and on Kindle, and I've also produced the audiobook for him, so that is ready. It's just in the approval phase on Amazon. However, you can uh, click right here and go directly to the print version. And Aliens from Planet X, if you want to have it um, shipped to you, you can buy it there. Um, on Amazon as well as the Kindle version. So highly recommended. And uh, yeah, he's he's done, uh, I think, a, a really good job with um, with this new book. And it's, it's a, a bit of a departure from the uh, Moon Man book, and yet it's very much in the same, um, the same genre, same style of writing. So feel free to look at that. I was just uh, adding this to his website a few days ago. So we could have it all up and rolling. I did the, um, I didn't really do the editing. I did the formatting of the book and um, prepared it for print, and put those files up on Amazon as well as on Amazon for Kindle, and then arranged the um, the audio book for him as well. So it's all it's all set. It's all available except the audio book. We're uh, we're waiting on the approval on that, which it should happen it, really any day. And then also new to the site here that I just added. A couple days ago, these are the interactive links that you can click on and, and watch and or read um, as you're reading the book. So Moon Man has a very similar type of thing, and um, each one of these th these little um, stories, either articles or videos, you're prompted from the book as you're reading it. It will say, you know, take a break here and and go to clip one on the website and watch that or whatever. So anyway, that's kind of uh, Bart's writing style. I think it's pretty cool. It's a good idea to have an interactive book. So that's what Aliens from Planet X is all about. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And here, his, here is his uh, Joe Rogan experience. I think we've had uh, lots of good feedback from um, 
from his appearance on the Joe Rogan show a few days ago, April 25th, so three days ago now. It's episode 2141, and I will link to this um, in my Substack post. So for you Spotifyers out there, you can um, click and go st- straight to it. I mean, you can just do a search on there for Joe Rogan's show and find him as well. It's, it's a really new show on the top of the list here at the moment. Um, so anyways, so congrats to Mr. Bart, and I think he's doing a really good job. And um, I got word from him the other day. He is back home safely, so that's good. And uh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a whirlwind, whirlwind type of trip for him, so I can't imagine. Anyway... So feel free to check that stuff out if you have time. I pulled this up and thought we could at least look at it. Levites, tune up for the third temple. This is on Israel 365 News. It says on Thursday, a third intermediary day of Passover, Levites gathered in Jerusalem to reenact their musical role in the temple. A group of about two dozen Levites gathered in the old city to practice their singing while wearing garments designed for use by the temple musicians in the third temple. I really think they're going to build the temple, don't you? Singing led to dancing, celebrating the joy of the biblical feast. The Levites also blew silver trumpets that had been prepared for use in the third temple. Traditionally, temple musicians were selected from the tribe of Levi. The Zohar, the Zohar, not the Bible, explains that the Levites were selected to sing in the temple because of the because the name Levi means to accompany and their music would cause others to come close to God. Yes, but which God? That's my question. In the days that the temples stood in Jerusalem, the Levites sang on the 15 steps corresponding to the 15 songs of ascent in Psalms 15 that led from the Ezrat Nashim, court of women, to the Ezrat Yisrael, court of Israelites. The Mishnah states that there were never less than 12 Levites standing on the platform, but their number could be increased indefinitely. While ordinarily no minor was permitted to enter the Azara, the courtyard, to take part in the service, the young Levites, Levites were permitted to join in the singing to add sweetness to the sound, but were not permitted to stand on the same platform with the adult Levites. So anyway, there's apparently some kids involved in some of these videos singing. So anyway, oh yeah, I see them right here. So feel free to have a look at that if you want. I thought that was kind of interesting. I do think they're going to get their third temple, don't you? Yep. Um, I do think it's coming as well. Cowboy says, yep. And how they get there, I don't know. But, you know, there's not room on the Temple Mount for everything. And something's got to give. Something's got to go. So how are they going to get rid of the mosque? That's my question. I think a tectonic weapon would be perfect. And another reason I think it would be um, appropriate that they use some sort of earthquake and then, and then you know, obviously they can claim, well, look, it was an earthquake. God did it. Even though they have tecton- tectonic weapons, they could do it. Um, they could claim that God did it. And then, if you've seen any of the videos, the earlier videos in my End Times Date series, especially number four, three and four, I guess, from the End Times Dates series, um, I mention in there that that uh, that is where the Ark of the Covenant is hidden. It's 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 very nearby. It's not at the Temple Mount, but it's close enough there in Israel that um, an earthquake that's done just right could free it up from where it is sitting. So if they have the um, Al-Aqsa Mosque collapsing or being badly damaged, and then also, lo and behold, look, it's the Ark of the Covenant, even though they already know where exactly where it is, they just can't touch it at the moment. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I mean, it all could happen all at one time. And, and what perfect thing is to use an earthquake to be able to uncover the Ark of the Covenant and also to damage the Al-Aqsa Mosque. So, gee, I guess we have to tear it down, and I think we have to build our third temple. Never mind the fact that they've raised enough money to build an entire city, not just a temple. Someone is going to bomb or allow a bomb to drop on the dome. I don't know. I mean, then you run the risk of really damaging the entire third, you know, the entire um, area there where the um, temple would be built. So I don't know if that would happen, but I guess it could. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm guessing that it's probably not too far off. 
So anyway, that was the end of the stories I have, the end of the articles. So feel free to uh, check out the link in the upper right corner up there, shop.thediamond.report, if you want to help me out. Notice there were zero commercials, none. Zero, zilch, nada. No commercials in this broadcast. And you guys can uh, support me if you want. If you don't want, that's totally fine. I'll keep reporting the news as I do anyway. But uh, I certainly do appreciate it if you guys want to help me out. There's stickers and mugs and hoodies and hats and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, Diamond Report related things, end times dates related things as well. And um, yeah, that would be awesome if you guys want to help me out. I certainly appreciate that. Diamonddisc.substack.com is where it is. And you guys can sign up uh, if you're not already. Make sure you're on the email list. It's totally free. And there is a mechanism there to give monthly if you want to. And again, no pressure. No pressure at all, but it is there should you guys want to support what I'm doing. And the links to my social media platforms that I'm on are all listed right here as well on the homepage of the Substack page. So let's see here. I was kind of trying to keep an eye on some of the chat as we were going by here, but I haven't really seen any of the more recent comments. So let me just take a look here and see if there's any anything else that is jumping out at me. Susan says, Doug, it's such an honor to be affiliated with so many truth seekers and speakers, just kind of say. Yeah, it is. It's an honor for me. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's been great. I mean, working with different people who are um, putting the truth out there, putting the biblical truth out there, especially. Um, but then for other things too, that, you know, things that you would never see on, you know, on the evening news, for instance, like geoengineering and so forth. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely an honor to be involved in helping some of these people get their message out. So, yeah, it's said that planet X came into our solar system 3,600 years ago, which is about the time of the flood. Okay. Cowboy says, yep. Um, Let's see. Bart's broadcast with Joe Rogan was good. He prevailed in telling his truth. It was a good broadcast. Yeah, um, I would mention that Joe Rogan was sort of playing devil's advocate with him on purpose. I kind of got the impression that Joe did pretty much agree with what Bart was saying. Um, but I feel like he was being devil's advocate because he called it Steel Man or whatever he called it. He had a name for it, not devil's advocate. Uh, but I felt like he was doing that mostly because he knew people were going to give him a hard time for supporting some conspiracy theory that we didn't go to the moon. Are you kidding? But, you know, I think he, he was wise enough to uh, approach it in that direction, in that way. But I do think I got the impression that he really agreed with Bart. He just wasn't really letting on that. But you can kind of tell by some of the questions. But it was really good. And it's a long it's a long broadcast. His His interviews are like three hours long. So they're... They go pretty deep, and they get into quite a bit of different things there. So it's definitely uh, worth a watch, and watch it in pieces if you don't have three hours to sit and watch it. But uh, Or do what I do. I just watched it at 2x, so it took me like an hour and a half to watch it. And uh, and if you're going to if you're gonna only watch one of those two interviews between the Rogan one and this one here um, on InfoWars, I think... He does just as good a job on InfoWars, so maybe just watch that one. Again, you can watch that at 2x as well and get through it in about 20-some minutes. So, um, but yeah, he, he did a good job with Harrison Smith. Note that he was not on camera on in, in the studio with AJ, and um, I don't know exactly why that is, other than I think that AJ, I think someone said last week, that AJ is a fan. AJ is a fan of the moon trip and the moon story, and that could very well be. I think he believes that that NASA actually did go to the moon. That was the impression I got. Um, but I don't know that that was ever really an option. He was um, also on a broadcast with Mike Adams on Natural News. I don't know if that's out yet, but that is coming soon if it's not already out. And um, I think Mike put him in touch with InfoWars, and I think Harrison Smith wanted to talk to him. That was the impression I got. So anyway, so yeah, I think the... Um, the, the show that Harrison does is really good, the American Journal. I don't know, William says, I can see there's a huge section that's not being used by the Muslims, so who knows. Is there any choice, is there any other choice of building the temple in another area? Yeah, that's something that I covered in End Times Dates Part 3. So that's a good question. Um, and that is, the original two temples were most likely, uh, I really have no doubt, 
that they were down the hill just a little ways in the city of David. So they could build the third temple right there now. Because there's, I mean, the Gion Springs is right there. There's not really that much there that, that they would have to really do to, to put it there. And yet tradition says it was on the Temple Mount, which is Roman Fort Antonium, Roman Fortress area. So I don't really think that uh, that's where it was. And I go through that in End Time States Part 3, if you guys haven't already seen that. Martino says, Doug, was the video about Musk being replaced on your Rumble and what's it called? Musk being replaced. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Martino. I'm sorry. I was talking about Disease X, um, and I think that it's interesting that his company's name is X. And they, I think that they may be trying to do away with, with old Musk. I mean, yeah, Musk is doing a lot of bad stuff. He really is. But he's also doing some things that is um, causing concern, I think, to the uh, global elites. Now, is it all a ploy? Is it all a plan? Maybe. I don't know. I guess it's possible, but it seems to me like he wouldn't be doing some of the things and saying some of the things he's saying um, if he wasn't trying to make some sort of amends or some sort of transition for some of the bad stuff he's done and, and said over the years. So, I don't know. Yeah. As far as uh, the video you're talking about, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I specifically recall AJ stating, I am 100% sure we went to the moon. Verbal home front. Yeah, I think you're right on that. And I totally disagree with that. I think that there's really no question. There's there's no way we went to the moon. It's just not possible. Um, at least not in terms of um, guys getting in a rocket and flying there. Now, is it possible to go through a jump room, which we've we've talked about before on this show? There, I think that there are jump rooms. I think those do exist, but those are probably more interdimensional and not not about getting in a a, a rocket and flying for. Uh, months or decades or, or however long to get there. Uh, there was a video interviewing someone who said Musk, Clintons, and Obama were all removed and replaced. Martino says. Maybe I saw it somewhere else. Yeah, I don't think that was me. I have not seen that. So that would be interesting, though. So anyways, yeah, let's see. What else we got here? We have uh, Twitter X. I wanted to mention that. Oh, here's a here's a little clip. Let's just watch this just real quick. This is um, of Bart on um, Joe Rogan's show. Robert Kennedy Jr. is 100% certain. He has more access to the JFK files than Oliver Stone does. He's 100% certain that his uncle, President Kennedy, was killed by the CIA. Then, as you mentioned, the Gulf of Tonkin. Robert McNamara, before he died, got it off his chest, said that the Gulf of Tonkin incident, the Pearl Harbor incident that got America behind the Vietnam War, never happened. He and the CIA completely fabricated it. Congress passed a law, the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, that led to the death of 3 million people and 58,220 American soldiers without cause. So, if the corrupt federal government is willing to kill their own duly elected president, if they're willing to needlessly kill 58,220 of their own soldiers, I don't think they have a problem faking an image of the moon on television. The problem is it's a positive lie. You see, whoever killed JFK, you're just changing who did it and why. He's still dead. It's still a tragedy. Or 9-11. You can change who did it and why, but all those people are still dead. This is a positive lie. And people don't want to give up that candy, and I come along and say, wake up and smell the manure. Yes, indeed. So anyway, that's a clip from the interview on Joe Rogan that was put out by Vigilant Fox on uh, his Twitter account, or on their Twitter account. So anyway, feel free to check that out if you guys want to. I'll link to it in the Substack post that I put out. And in fact, I already did link to it on my Facebook pages, so... Um, but you guys can look it up just as easily. You know who isn't struggling to buy groceries and pay rent? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Kind of get that idea. And I posted this as well on Facebook. So far, I still have a Facebook page, even though I did this. It says, uh, I did say that this might get fact-checked. I don't know that it did. But Captain Dementia. And... Um, this I thought I would play as well. I think we'll be okay with this. It does have some music in it, which is always, you always run the risk of some copyright weird weirdness happening. Um, but we, sh we should watch this. I think it was um, pretty well done. 
and uh, says how to destroy America in 25 easy steps. So I thought that was pretty good. Really well done. And um, yeah, I agree with those. I think there's probably more, more things you could add on how to destroy America in 25 easy steps. Pretty wild. Um, oh yeah, I thought, I thought this was funny. You guys know who Owen Benjamin is? I don't really know a lot about him. I guess he's a comedian, but I saw this video and thought it was pretty funny. Check this out. Conspiracy theorist. I like that. It's a wasp. Nice guy. Pretty funny. But it, sa it says here that he, um, that video got him banned from TikTok. Pretty funny. All right. Well, anyway, yeah, you can find me on Twitter X by going to the Diamond R P R T. So the Diamond Report, but report is abbreviated. And why is abbreviated such a long word? I've always wondered that. You ever thought about that? And let's see here. Take it to the Lord in prayer on end times. Take it to the Lord in prayer end times dates on YouTube. And most of you guys know about that. And then this is my Diamond Disc channel on Rumble. It's where the um, video from tonight will end up. It will be on Rumble. And thank you to the Rumblers over there. Got, looks like 20 some people watching over on Rumble. So that's good. About the same. We're, we're, we're running right about the same on Rumble as we are on um, on YouTube at any given moment. So I think that's good news. Let's see here. We've got the uh, Diamond Report also on BitChute and Brighteon. And this is the band group. The band group. We got people beating down the doors to join the band group. No, I'm just joking. But we do have a few people in there. I think we're up to, what, 70-something now? So, yeah, 72 is what this says. So, anyway, I think that's good. That's good. And um, totally free. If you guys want to join a group of like-minded individuals, feel free to uh, to join join the party. Join the group over here. All the cool kids are doing it. So make sure you are a cool kid, too. Um, no, I get nothing for promoting. And it's just strictly if you want to go there and uh, and... Post what you're researching yourself and or make some new friends, maybe. And it's many of the folks in chat are also in the um, the band group. So the Diamond Report on band. And uh, I would just like to say, this is fine. This is fine. And I saved this because I thought it was so appropriate. I found the video on X. Can I post the link? Or I need a wrench. Martino. Oh, yes. Um, the video... Um, let's see. You can post it in band. I don't think you can post... I'm not sure that you can post it on the YouTube chat. You can probably post it in the Rumble chat. Maybe go to Rumble and try it there. So, anyways, that is all for me tonight, I guess. Feel free to, uh, follow on the various platforms. Certainly appreciate that. I, I keep losing subscribers on YouTube. YouTube. I, I'm the only person that I know of whose, whose subscribers are going down. And I'm putting out new videos, and I'm still losing subscribers. So either I'm really terrible, which that could be. I don't know. I'm, either I'm really terrible, and people don't like what I put out, or YouTube is peeling off subscribers, one one or two every week, it seems like. So I'm going backwards. Uh, let's see. Susan says, Band is hard to join from my perspective, not user-friendly. Well, you go to band.us, www.band.us, and you can join there for free. So you sign up for a... Um, well, it's like it would be like if you were trying to join some other social media platform. It's about the same. Go to band.us and sign up for a free account, and then you just click the link that Miss Emily put there in chat. Uh, or you can go to um, just be on the Substack list, and I, I always send out the join the Diamond Report Band link there. So you just once you're on Band, you just click the link, and then it you can request to join the group. Not a big deal. So hopefully it's uh, fairly easy. Sorry if it is hard. I mean, try not to make it hard, but it's not my platform. It's Band's platform. Uh, another excellent report and presentation. Thank you. Healing prayers continue. Thank you, Miss Betty. Appreciate that very much. Uh, you're not the only YouTube user losing folks. I could name several. Yeah. And I'm not real concerned about it just because, um, again, I'm, I'm surprised I'm even still on there, honestly. But I think uh, Rumble's good. I've got some, some um, subscribers on there as well, so that's good, I think. And, and if you guys are... Um, you know, if you think of it, feel free to like, share, and subscribe on those different platforms. I definitely appreciate it. This particular video, I'll end up having to take down, and we'll put up a YouTube safe version so that you can feel completely safe when I upload it to YouTube, probably Tuesday. And um, if you want to join me on the premiere of that at some point Tuesday afternoon or evening, probably, 
whenever I get it done and edited and reposted to YouTube. And um, yeah, you can go on there and um, like that video at that time. I certainly would appreciate that very much. So if you don't want to donate, you can you can help me by um, just going and liking and sharing the videos. That would be super helpful. Um, so anyway, hopefully you guys will have a very blessed week. I haven't really decided for sure about changing the show time and day. Um, the the poll that I took on band, the poll that I took so far, and you can still vote, by the way. The voting's still open. Um, the poll that I took did have me, um, I think it kind of surprised me a little, but people wanted to keep it on Sunday, although at an earlier time. So um, people do seem to want me to stay um, on the live show here on Sunday, but just make it at an earlier time. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at doing. And um, of course, I'm still working through a few things as far as my schedule goes. And um, that may be in the cards. We may be able to do that. We'll have to see how things work out. And um, if not, we always have this default 10 p.m. Central Time on Sunday nights. That does seem to work pretty well for my schedule. So that's good. That seems to be pretty consistent. So anyway, I hope you guys have a blessed week, and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments. Like, share, and subscribe, as I said. And uh, if you guys come up with anything as far as uh, stuff you're looking at and want me to um, mention on the broadcast, feel free to post that in band. That's a good way to, uh, to reach me on Substack as a comment or um, on band as a comment, or you can just do your own posts on band as well. So hopefully it's not too difficult to join. If you have any trouble, just let me know. Just shoot me a message, and I will um, certainly help you get get signed up and get set up on um, Band. Again, it's totally free. So blessings to you all, and I hope you guys have a really great week. And we'll watch one more video as we go out, and um, we'll do it again next week. Same time, same channel, as they say, and um, we'll, we'll just uh, cover more craziness then, I suppose. Hope that sounds good. Talk to you later. Love you guys.